Today we're running a structural waveform response test. Basically science speak for we're gonna blast some sound into a metal plate and see what happens. If this works, we'll literally watch sound create patterns out of salt or pepper or whatever we put on that surface. So we're gonna use this metal plate. It's basically like a metal sign type material that you would see in a parking lot or something. So we're gonna drill a hole in this. We'll support it with something. And then I'm gonna attach a bone conduction speaker to it, place a few different Hertz vibrations through it, and we'll see what happens. Now I wanna get as many angles as I can to get like some really cool footage in there. So I have this as well. This is just some acrylic sheeting. It's pretty thick, so I think that it should perform pretty well in a vibration setting just because it is gonna have a decent amount of structure. It won't flop around too much. So basically what I'm gonna do is make a template out of this so that we have two of the same structure and we can kind of see based on that shape from you know different angles and different sides and stuff. However, the other option is to do a circle like Adam Beeler did. Let's do both. Now, before we get started, we really wanna learn how all this works and we wanna get a proper demonstration of what it should look like. So let's head down to the University of Utah. We'll talk to Adam Beeler again at the Physics and Astronomy Department. He'll be able to teach us some pretty cool things here, show us a few demonstrations, and then we'll head back here and we'll try it ourselves. All instruments vibrate. It's the strings are what you pluck and force to vibrate, but they're attached physically to a wood body. And the reason we can hear it is because like the plastic spring, like the strings vibrate, but if they're not making the air move around, we don't hear it. So they're attached to the wood that also vibrates and can push a lot of air around. This is what, exactly what the woods would be doing. A well-built violin, and why they're so expensive, is because you want the wood to reinforce the resonant frequencies of the notes you're playing. If they're fighting or the wood is stiff and it doesn't vibrate symmetrically, it's not gonna sound as nice. But all instruments have resonant frequencies and are vibrating even the bodies, not just the strings and the air inside. And this is just helping us see and visualize those waves. Where do we see that in the real world where we've forcibly changed the resonance of something for a, a different outcome? My first thought is all stringed instruments where you change the fingering, Yep. you're forcing a different re resonant frequency. We're gonna sprinkle some salt on top of the black paint. So now I'm gonna do the same thing, stick and slip. Found a different frequency. And you can see it dancing around. Let's see, let's find. There's that original one. And I'll force a different natural frequency. Now it's a higher note and we have shorter waves. This, this part of the plate is moving a lot and the, where the salt settles, it's not moving at all. Okay, don't need that piece. We've got this, rounded that one corner. I'm just gonna round the other ones. That's a fully dead battery. I know here's gonna be my center. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drill that real quick. I wanna make a circle or as close to it as possible. So I'm just gonna go ahead and thread this one more time. And then I'm gonna find the widest point I can go. It's just a broken bit, but it'll get me a good enough line to be able to work off of. Beautifully done, ladies and gents. Now we need to cut out our circle. We can do our testing. Now I have salt and pepper. The salt I have is just the, the pink Himalayan sea salt from Costco, pepper, whatever Walmart had. If you're trying this at home, then you can just use those. I was trying to find something that you could see. Hopefully that'll come across and you'll be able to see it on camera pretty well, but we won't know until we try. Now 
Lordy. I think that my blade might be bent. <sighs> okay. You didn't see that. There's a couple different ways that we can find center on this. It's not that necessary that it's perfect, so I'll just do the best I can. Um, all right, we're gonna drill a hole in this so that we can thread it onto our stand that we're gonna use. Beautiful. A nice clean surface. Oh. Nearly got me. Oh no, the hole ruined the peel. And if you'll notice, it is definitely perfectly centered. You can trust me here. This is a perfect circle. There's no need to pause it and like double check on your screen. Just, just trust me, it's exactly 100% perfect with zero flaws. <clears throat> So let's see if it even dances. Let's get our speakers. Now I've never used these speakers before, so we're testing this out right now together. Wild. Clean off that surface a little bit and see what happens when we apply some pepper. Now, if you like videos like this, more science experiments, stuff that's covering things that maybe you wouldn't see every day, then like, comment, subscribe, let us know. So what did we learn today? Sound has structure. You can't see it, but you can hear it, right? And you can hear it because that structure exists. We have some other awesome stuff coming on the way, some really cool science experiments, some other fun ideas, DIYs and builds. So make sure that you follow along, like, subscribe, and smash that bell. Come on, Frank, come say goodbye. Good girl. Bye-bye, bye-bye.